Tyler OJ Simpson passed away on Wednesday. His family announced the news on Thursday. Uh, and, and look, this if there is one man in the history of sports who has a complicated legacy, it is OJ Simpson, one of the best NFL running backs of all time. But of course, anytime you talk about OJ, you have to talk about the fact that he was charged uh, for double murder, that he is accused of uh, killing Nicole Brown system, Simpson and killing Ronald Goldman. And yes, he was acquitted there, uh, but later found guilty in a civil lawsuit. So when you think of OJ Simpson, how do you think he should be remembered? Also went to prison. I mean, we're talking about obviously the double double murder and double homicide, but he also went to prison for armed robbery for, I believe it was nine years or so. So you're right. A complicated person in you know american history american sports history nfl history when you talk about how we should remember him i think you can look at everything you can say everything that you just said one of the better running backs in the league's history but also one of the biggest fall from graces in professional sports in american history as well you're talking about somebody who was at the height of it an actor a you know a, in a ton of commercials as a promoter you have one you know a pro football hall of fame running back and then it completely falls to a an alleged murderer and going to prison for armed robbery and and all of those things that happened in between the white bronco chase just some huge moments in not just sports history but in american recent american history so you can just look at it as a totality of how do we remember him one of the greatest figures of all time and or one of the more infamous figures of all time, one of the greatest fall from graces of all time. Yeah. And I think that obviously when you mention Simpson, if you're mentioning his NFL career, you have to mention his legal troubles and everything he went through. That's not yeah. fair to what happened to everyone else. It's not fair to Nicole Brown Simpson, to Ronald Goldman, not to mention that when you mentioned OJ and I think one thing we saw today, for instance, the uh, pro football hall of fame released a statement where they just basically shouted out OJ's accolades and what he did in the NFL even mentioned that, Hey, look, he had an okay post NFL career. And really they omitted any of the legal stuff, which I don't think is the right way to do it. And so obviously, you know, the hall of fame is the hall of fame. They're not associated with the NFL. Technically, they're their own entity. Uh, and they usually make the right decision on things like that. But I thought that they didn't do – they, they kind of went about it the wrong way today. Yeah, it just felt, like you are saying, bland. And uh, I don't know if tone deaf the right word, but clearly – omitting kind of a big thing when we're talking about OJ Simpson, all of the, you know, off the field stuff. And I get it that they are an entity that is strictly looking at him as a player. I know you wrote the story that he's not removed from the hall of fame. I think some people might find that pretty interesting. The fact that he's not removed from the hall of fame, considering all of the tumultuous things around him post his playing career. But I, I do think that it's fascinating just, again, to look outward or, or kind of grand scheme things with O.J. Simpson and just say how big of a, of a figure he was. I was talking to Harry about this before we jumped on, and I was trying to equate it to somebody. I'm like, the fact that he was commentating on every commercial was such a, a charming figure in American sports and American consumption viewing. It's almost like he was like, you know, today's version of maybe like Peyton Manning or something like that for people that are watching NFL broadcasts, watching television, Manning's in a bunch of commercials. He's doing Manning casts. And the fact that you had somebody kind of like that fall as far down as he did, I think is just, a, it's a remarkable turn of events in recent history. Yeah. And I would say if anybody is listening right now and they've never seen OJ made in America, the ESPN series, the 30 for 30, that's five parts Definitely go out and watch that. It really encompasses everything that OJ was from his legendary football career, where he was the first running back to crack the 2,000-yard mark. He did it in 14 games. Uh, he averaged just over 143 yards rushing that season in 1973 when he won MVP, and that's still the NFL record for yards per game. And, and so he had some huge years with the Bills, obviously, which is why he's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And as you said, he got huge in movies. He was doing Naked Gun. He was doing Hertz commercials. He was literally everywhere. He was probably the most famous athlete in the country 
uh, just for being famous, even though he retired from the NFL in 1979. So we're talking 10, 15 years later, he was still extremely famous. Uh, and then obviously the fall from grace starts in 1994 uh, with the deaths of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. So it, it really is. And you've mentioned, you've said the words fall from grace multiple times, and that's really what it was. And it just happened so quickly and it was so unbelievable. And I, I think the documentary really does a good job of capturing how America was and what everyone was going through during that trial. I mean, all eyes were on that trial. That Ford Bronco chase had some of the highest television ratings in history. Every network cut to it. They cut away from the NBA finals. And so everybody knows where they were if they were alive. When the verdict was announced, it was just it's just so crazy uh, when you look at his life in total, just where it was and what it became. And it's weird, too, because, you know, somebody like me who, I, you know, I think a lot of you just mentioned it. He, you know, he was, you know, a player in the 70s. He won the MVP in 1973. I'm 30 years old, going to be 31 next month. I was born in 1993. The trial, I believe, started in 1995. I, you know, I was a young guy when all of, or I was a baby when all that was going on. I wasn't even a young guy to even kind of take that in right now. You know, me growing up. OJ Simpson was never the the NFL star running back. He wasn't even really the the pitch man or the the movie star. He was this guy that you know allegedly a lot of people believe, even though he was acquitted, murdered two people in, in was in a rather horrific fashion, and then kind of posted weird stuff all the time on the internet. Like if we're just being honest, that's kind of how I have consumed OJ Simpson in my life because I was I you know all of that stuff predates me so. It's just a, it's, he's an odd figure to tap into because it does span over multiple generations. For me, like I was saying, he's the guy that, you know, clearly had a, a, a crazy thing happen in the 90s and, you know, he was acquitted and it was, a, you know, an unbelievably polarizing trial. But to me, it's, it's, he's a dude that posted weird stuff on the internet, spent time in prison for nine years for armed robbery. Like that's the stuff that really kind of is at least more, I can remember that stuff more than obviously anything that happened when I was a baby. So it's, he's just an odd figure to kind of pinpoint into history at this point. Yeah. And it's really crazy to me that you have OJ Simpson who uh, obviously gets acquitted in uh, of the charges found guilty in the civil court and was ordered to pay the Goldman family 33 and a half million dollars, ended up selling his Heisman trophy for $255,000 to help pay that debt. And you look at everything in totality, and you would think if you got off for something like that and you just got to go home and there's not really – obviously there's the financial punishment hanging over your head, but you're not in jail. You would just kind of go back and lead a quiet life, you would think. And as you mentioned, you have the arm robbery situation. He goes to jail for just over nine years in Nevada, and it's just like, what are you doing, OJ? Why are, why are you anywhere near – anything that's breaking the law at this point. And it was so unbelievable. And then when he gets out of jail in 2017, you look at what, how the NFL has kind of handled this and whether, because they definitely don't celebrate OJ Simpson's legacy, which is probably the smart thing. But you know, when they had the hundredth anniversary season in 2019, OJ Simpson was on the 100th anniversary team. They're not out here celebrating OJ, but they're acknowledging that he's, one of the best players in NFL history. So I think that it's, it's just a touchy subject for the NFL. You know, they're not trying to ruffle any feathers, but again, as we said, you have to mention all the bad stuff with OJ before you can talk about the good stuff. Yeah. I've, and I think that that's fair. Like it, it, again, it is a tough needle to thread if you're the NFL, but you know, I am somebody who thinks you should mention everything. You should not, you know, hide the, the dirty laundry in the closet, so to speak. I think that you can acknowledge that this person was a, you know, a very high, you know, high profile player in your league, a very productive player, one of the best players in your league at one point. But also you don't have to, you know, have these, you know, grand goodbyes or in, you know, these, you know, I feel like I was wondering too, like if, the NFL has their NFL honors. Like, is he like in the in memoriam? Like, is that something that they do? I'm I'm sure that they probably will, but it's just it it's it's an it's a complicated thing for the NFL to try to maneuver. But I think that it's smart to it still acknowledge him, the good and the bad. 
Yeah, you don't just erase him from history. Sure. Uh, but man, what a person. And, uh, you know, obviously we're still talking about him today, uh, 40 years after he played his last NFL snap. And it really is rather unbelievable just what his kind of life fell into after his career was over.